Hey, you guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Taryn Swears. I think I've got another good one in store for you guys um, because we're talking about hormones again. I'm really excited to introduce you to my guest. Um, and I really am more excited because um, if you, I'm going to let you guys listen and see if you can catch what I did right out of the gates when I got a chance to um, connect with Monica, which we became friends on Instagram, um, which imagine that. Like, I love that that's the era that we live in is that you generate relationships, friendships, um, camaraderie collaboration on Instagram. And um, I'm excited for you guys to meet Monica. This is Monica Eva. And um, we bonded over hormones, <laughs> believe it or not, and her accent. Again, I'm not going to like reveal it yet until she um, gets a chance to kind of share a little bit about herself. But the reason why I'm excited to have Monica on and have you guys hear from her hopefully validates all the stuff that I keep blabbing on about hormones and nutrition and how it impacts our health and our way of living and just like the whole aura that um, we exude when it comes to this category in this season of our life, right? And some of us, the season is longer than others. Um, but this is why she's, uh, I think, so aligned with, you know, how I speak and talk through things because um, she's a hormone nutritionist. So boom, right there. Um, she's helped hundreds and thousands of women, thousands of women rebalancing her their hormones so they can release weight, regain energy and libido and return to feeling sexy and confident in their skin inside and out. And she also holds a holistic certification um, in holistic hormone health. So I love all of that, that you've got that specialty to present to the universe, um, but also more importantly, to be able to come talk to my little audience um, and just, you know, break out and open about all things hormones. So Monica, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. There it is. Did you guys catch it? Did you hear the twang in her voice? You guys know that I am Canadian. And so when I heard her voice on, we exchanged voice messages on Instagram. It was like automatic affection to this woman. I was like, I don't even know you, but I love you because you <laughs> have that Canadian twang. She's like, oh my God, how did you know? <laughs> so um, I don't have it anymore because it got teased out of me as a kid. Um, once I moved to the States, I, you know, I, I adopted to the American language. But anyways, you're amazing. And I'm so happy you're here. So please, will you just kind of share a little bit about who you are, your family life and and most importantly, well, not most importantly, but also like how you got into this and, and why you do what you do. For sure. Well, just number one, thank you so much for having me. And I have to say, you're the first person to ever call me out on my Canadian accent. No one ever guesses. They're always like, what part of the States are you from? So I thought that was really funny. It was very refreshing. Um, but basically a little bit about me. So I live just right outside of Toronto, Canada, a cute little suburb with a German shepherd and my partner and you know life is just great so far um we're probably gonna be working towards having like building on our little family but more than anything the uh, I'm deeply passionate about hormone health and it really stems from me having my own issues with hormone imbalances almost about 10 years ago so it all started when I was doing all the right things that everyone says to do to lose weight. I was very active from a very, um, like I want to say since I was able to cook for myself, I was always into cooking very healthy meals, hence my certification in holistic nutrition. And I just found that no matter what I did, I couldn't lose weight. And instead I started to gain weight. And it became extremely frustrating because I didn't, I couldn't figure out what was going on. But more than anything, it wasn't even just the weight. It was also my energy, the way I felt in my body. I felt like there were days where I'd wake up. I felt very sluggish, very unmotivated. And that's so unlike my personality. So, you know, you start feeling all these different things. I ended up going to see my doctor who ran standard blood work and told me that everything was fine. Oh my God, the standard. I literally have had this conversation with like five different people this week about the, oh, you're normal with your hormone blood panels. Right. And so, but the thing is, is she was just like, let's just run this testing, see what's going on. Everything, everything came back normal. She said, you know, like you're only like 24, 25 years old. There's no way 
that something is like that wrong with you. We would have found it. So whatever's going on, it's probably related to the stress you have from school, or maybe there's something going on like with family life. Is there anything like this? And I said, no, like I'm generally a very happy person. Nothing's going on. Um, so she recommended that we try an antidepressant and I was very much against it. However, I did try it for about three months or so, maybe not even a full three months. And I hated how I felt because it made me feel worse. I did not need an antidepressant, but you know, when your doctor's telling you like, this is what I think is going to help you give it a try. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it just kind of like continued. The next thing was let's try birth control. And I thought like, I really don't like how I feel when I'm on birth control. I felt even worse. I came off of that. Um, and so really like I started working with alternative care practitioners. So like I, I worked with a few naturopaths and I never really got any results and I couldn't figure it out. And at that time I was, I started working in the legal industry, liked my job. It was kind of stressful, but you know, you're just, when you're young, I was very motivated to just climb the corporate ladder. What ended up happening was I started getting to a point in my life where I couldn't physically get out of bed. I would wake up in the morning and I was so tired that I didn't have it in me to get ready for work. And that's when I knew like something is not right. Like I am so exhausted. My eyelids feel so heavy. I can't figure it out. And so I ended up uh, just fueling myself on caffeine. I, like I needed three grandes from Starbucks every single day to get me through the day because I didn't want to lose my job. And I just hit the gym even harder. I would take pre-workout to get through. And I just thought, you know what, Monica, like you're either being lazy or there's something that's going on, but we need to fix it. Anyways, long story short, I ended up enrolling in holistic nutrition school just because I had such a big passion for healthy eating and for holistic nutrition in general. And it was in a lecture that I was sitting in on. And the professor listed off like all these different symptoms that I felt was spot on me. And so this is how we introduced the hormone course to us. And I realized, oh my goodness, like he's talking about me and we're talking about hormone imbalances. And so that's where it all started. I decided to look and dive deep into investigating hormone imbalances. I really fought for myself to get certain tests done. A lot of the testing doctors just wouldn't agree because of my age. They didn't think there was reason for it. So I ended up paying out of pocket for a lot of testing, but I discovered that I had dysregulated cortisol. I was in the exhaustive phase, meaning I was like completely burnt out. My body wasn't producing enough cortisol to meet my daily demands of life. My, I had um, an under-functioning thyroid that in blood work to doctors looked fine because I didn't qualify for medication. I didn't qualify for um, a prescription. However, I still had a lot of symptoms and nobody was testing thyroid antibodies. And I had pretty high thyroid antibodies, which is like when the immune system starts to attack the thyroid gland, but nobody really screens this until there's something wrong with your thyroid with, with the other thyroid markers. So there was a lot of things that just like slipped through the cracks. And so I went on, studied advanced women's hormones, and I ended up literally turning my whole life around. My energy came back, libido came back. Uh, my gosh, my hair had was also like falling out a little bit, like that grew back. I lost 30 pounds and I've kept it off since. And I discovered that there were so many other women in the world that had these exact same struggles as I did with no way out like they had no idea what to do and so that's what really fueled this whole where I am today that's how I ended up that's really the that so now I'm curious and when you were sitting there listening to this lecture and him rattling off all of these issues what were they like what were the ones that were glaring to you because it'll be interesting when someone's listening going oh my god that's me like that's my end goal is that I want people to self-identify you know go oh Yes, yes, yes. And then they go, okay, there's hope. I'm not the only one. Yeah. So, I mean, like, he, I remember this. So he started off saying, you know, if you wake up and you don't feel refreshed, 
Um, if you feel like you hit an afternoon wall and in my head, I was like, well, everyone probably feels like this, but then the one that really stuck out was, he said, when you get up after sitting and you stand and you feel a little bit dizzy or lightheaded. And I thought, wow, I feel like this all the time. Or if you're like exercising and you're like, whoa, I need like a second because I'm feeling a little bit dizzy or lightheaded. That is a sign of dysregulated cortisol because we sometimes think that Cortisol is this hormone, it's this bad hormone. It's not bad. We actually need sufficient amount of it to be able to increase our blood pressure so we can do things. So when our dis when our cortisol is dysregulated, what ends up happening is when we go to get up, that it causes the blood pressure to not be able to rise with what we're doing. And then, so this is why we feel lightheaded and dizzy. So that was like the big one. Um, dysregulated sleep was also something that really stuck out. Like I was tired all day long. Come night, I couldn't fall asleep. So that is like another big telltale sign. If you feel like you get a second wind at night, your cortisol is dysregulating. Interesting. I also have a couple thoughts on like lifestyle stuff, um, which has been, I feel like a topic of conversation. Um, I literally just published a podcast um, yesterday on this whole thing, just re nighttime behaviors, which I think is makes a big impact on people's sleep cycles. But I also think there's so much more to unpack there. So we won't, we won't regurgitate that. Um, so when you started to kind of crack the egg open and go, holy shit, I have this, this, and this. And then you did a deep dive. Like what was really your first course of action? Like what was the first thing that you recognized holistically that you changed? You know what? It wasn't even just one thing. It was like a number of different things right off the bat. I realized that the supplements I was taking weren't enough for what my body needed. So I was just taking like regular, like a B complex because everyone says take a B complex, right? But the B, the specific B complex I was taking didn't have enough B5 in it for what my adrenals needed. I needed something with a higher dose. Um, so that was like one of the first things I was like, whoa, we need to switch out my supplements. I was also just like taking like multivitamins and thinking that that was enough. My body actually needed more nutrients. All the years that I had yo-yo dieted and just really like forced my body to, you know, eat less and exercise more really depleted the nutrients in my body. So it was all about replenishment um, with the, the, through supplements. And then of course, with food, I realized that, you know, restricting what I was eating just wasn't working for me. I needed to incorporate a lot more fat than I was taking in and not being so afraid of having half an avocado for breakfast and thinking, oh my gosh, like, that's more calories than I should be eating. That's more calories than I wanted to have for breakfast, right? So when you're in this depleted state, you you have to make up for what you haven't been feeding your body. Yeah. So th that was like the big thing with nutrition. And then of course, with lifestyle, it was all about managing stress. Like I was very stressed out. There was a lot of stress in my life. And obviously like you can't get rid of all of your stress, right? Cause you have bills and you have probably an employer and you know, all these different things that happen. But what you can learn is how to support your body to have better resiliency to stress. And so that was something that I started implementing like right off the bat. It was a lot of like deep breathing, more yoga. Cause I felt like I was the type of person where I couldn't just turn my, like, I can't just turn my brain off. It just wants to run, right? It has things that it wants to think of and I don't know how to slow down. So for me, it was more so about training myself how to slow down. God, well, I feel like we can all take a lesson on that. Um, Cause I am like you, my brain is always thinking and, and like, I'm, you know, thinking probably into tomorrow, right? When you're not right now, but <laughs> you know, like you're just, when you're, you're sitting doing a project, you're working on your computer, like your mind just starts to kind of go into a different direction. Like, oh, I can't forget. I got to do this tomorrow or gosh, I love this, but you know what I could really do with this is I can, you know, make it better. Like the, our, you know, it's, and that doesn't help. Right. Like, it's also like not easy to say, okay, let's just shut that side of our brain off. That doesn't really work. So I like the management of like the lifestyle management. You know, there's so much that we can do to adjust and, and 
tell me if you fall if you run into this too in working with some of your clients um you know they'll immediately come and say oh it's my hormones you know which nine times out of ten it probably is but the failed recognition of lifestyle choices right um and all that goes into that and probably a close second would be nutrition and then you know sleep probably falls into lifestyle choices but do you find that those are probably the first resolution that can be resolved in you know just starting somewhere for sure like i i'm so happy that you brought up sleep i feel like sleep is one of those things that if you fix your sleep everything else will just kind of fix itself right mm -hmm. for the most part you will definitely see improvement. It might not fix everything going on in your body, but you will see a huge improvement. Um, and so I find that that's like the big thing for a lot of women. And also just, you know, sometimes like something else that women do, a lot of my clients, before they start working with me, we like, I'll ask them, tell me a little bit about your nutrition. And half of them are skipping meals. And I'm thinking, well, no wonder you have dysregulated cortisol. You're skipping your meals. Your blood sugar is all over the place. This is going to have a huge impact on all the other hormones downstream. So for sure, your lifestyle has so much to do with the health and state of your hormones. And I, and it's really tough to draw I, I, women to that because we are just accustomed and I feel like it's in our culture and it's in our generation to be firing on all cylinders all the time, right? And then you layer in having children and the toll that that takes on one's hormones, right? But also just to, just to keep it in the cortisol category, because I think we could probably have another podcast and we might have to have like a part two here. Um, I think we could go down this rabbit hole <clears throat> of, you know, really like the three primary drivers with hormones, with estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, and when to understand if those are truly the culprit. But in this, to keep it very simplistic, I think for this, this series, um, talking about cortisol and what it really means and how it's influenced, right? And how we're impacted by it and, and why it is gets easily deregulated. And it's really hard because of our culture and our society. We are expected to have all of these things um, accomplished, right? Whether it's your employer's expectation of your nine to five turns really to like nine to seven, um, you know, being a parent, having multiple children and, diff you know, you've got them in two, three activities, each and then you know having to do all that while either juggling a career or trying to juggle a business right so all of those become such a influence but having to kind of step back and go okay you can't just stop all that but how what's been kind of a really good um kind of compromise in helping de uh re-regulate them in a natural sense knowing that you know there's only so much you can change in your lifestyle Right. So for me, like, I think that we can do anything that we want. Like we can be like the super mom. We could have like a thriving business, have like an amazing relationship with our partner. I think we can do all of these things. Mm -hmm. However, we also need to give ourselves space and ourselves time to regulate our nervous system and to unwind. So something that I tell every single one of my clients is from this day forward, you're going to find five minutes, because I know you have five minutes, five minutes in your day, every single day to do something that's going to relax your nervous system, mm -hmm. to put it into that parasympathetic state, that rest and digest state where your body knows that it's safe. And so, yes, we had all these other stressors like, yes, maybe you were late for soccer practice. Yes, maybe the teacher called you because, I don't know, your son got in trouble at recess. Yes, maybe a bill, like an unexpected bill came in, but it doesn't matter because your body is getting a break from the stress because you're giving it that break. So it understands that like we, you know, all the stress happened, but we are still fine. And I think that's what it comes down to is just working on that resiliency where we're not going to get rid of the stressors. We can't. And our body is resilient enough to deal with stress. It's just, it, it has to have a break from the stress. So are you giving yourself that break? And that's, how, that's hard for, I think, women and also mothers to find and, and justify that, right? Because I feel like we try and put so much into our day that like, you know, I have basically every hour accounted for. Now, 
mind you, do I have an extra five, 10 minutes? Absolutely. Everybody does. Like, you know, I always remember Beyonce said something when she's like, you know what? I have the same 24 hours that you do. You know, someone was asking about her success and it's, it's true. We all have the same 24 hours and how we choose. And that's like, I feel like the operative word there, how we choose to use it is so important to the process, right? Like we choose what our behaviors are and our choices day in and day out. We get to choose what time we're going to get off our phone and put it away. We get to choose what time we're going to bed in a general sense, right? You know, if you've got activities to take you to late, we get to choose how we're going to nourish ourselves. Are we going to go through the drive through again because we didn't get ourselves prepared in time and now we're eating fast food for the fourth time this week? That's a choice, right? But coming to terms with those choices, I feel like we, we put ourselves in this victimhood. Um, and that's, a you know, I'm pretty straight shooter when it comes to, you know, working with my clients in that regard is that, hey, you've got to take like a full assessment of your life and those things that you're choosing to do. Nobody's forcing you to do any of these one things. You're choosing to do this, that, and the other, like something has to give, right? So what are some like, <clears throat> what are some specific exercises that you'll take a client through? Like kind of give us an example of what you'll, that'll bring to light and allow them to bring to light those things that can be adjusted. For sure. So for instance, um, right off the bat, like if you're having a very stressful, busy day and you feel like, whoa, I've gone through so much when you're in the car by yourself or you have like that five minutes, take a nice deep breath, like inhale and then exhale, let it all out. Like maybe it's on the drive to pick up the kids from school. Like I know if we're talking about like busy moms, I know that they're in the car by themselves at some point in time, even if they have like a little kid in the back, they could still do that breath. Um, getting off your phone late at night, like just don't do it. Why are we doing it? You know, if you're complaining about your energy and your sleep and your weight, and you don't like how you feel in your body, start prioritizing your sleep. The way to start prioritizing your sleep is get off the screens at least one hour before bed. I know that, you know, we don't have to be on a screen before bed. We're just like you said, we're choosing to be. So that's definitely something that I always recommend. And then the other thing too is, and this is more of like a mindset thing, is just like focus on things that bring you joy. Mm -hmm. Like don't look at everything as like, oh, like I dread making the kids lunches or I dread doing homework with the kids or whatever it is that's coming up for you or what you, whatever you're doing that day. More so focus on the things that bring you joy. So like, yes, okay, you're going to do this, but then what else are you going to do that's fun? Mm -hmm. So I feel like sometimes we just get stuck in this mentality where everything's like, go, 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 go. And we have all these tasks and chores that we almost forget to have fun and enjoy ourselves. You're right. Because I think we don't, either we don't think we deserve it. We um, could always find something to fill that opportunity, right? Like you get invited to go out to happy hours, like always can be something else that you can fill it in, you know, like, oh, I should do this instead. And instead of allowing that to be an experience that allows you to release yourself, right? So I've, there's, and there's so many tools. I mean, you can go on Google and, and Google something that just will allow you to kind of, you know, do box breathing. I think breathing has probably been a big game changer for me, especially regulating any anxious thoughts or like I'll get mild panic attacks and you know who knows what sets them off these days and it's just probably you know having the influx of things that i feel like i need to get accomplished um, but box breathing's been really really powerful you know the inhale like for four counts holding it for four releasing it for four holding it at that exhale for four um so i love that and that's a huge tool that like anybody can do you know you don't need to be certified you don't need to have somebody to tell you or guide you how to do it like you can literally do box breathing at the stoplight don't close your eyes obviously, <laughs> right? I feel like that caveat had to be said. Journaling, right? Like reading and escaping and finding a, finding almost that uh, replacement. And we, some of us call it replacement therapy. Like we use our phones sometimes to decompress. Like I get it, fine, you know, you've gone through your day, you've got your emails answered. You, sometimes you just want a couple of minutes to scroll on social media. But what social media designed to do it's designed to keep us addicted and oh, just one more reel. Oh, just one more thing. Oh, I want to go see their stories and what they did. And next thing you know, it's been an extra hour, right? So let's say we took, you know, like 
I'm one of your clients and you know, you're like, okay, Taryn, you need to pump the brakes. You need to, I want you to take five minutes and find your breathing before you go pick up the kids. I want you to start journaling. I want you to get off your phone an hour beforehand. And then, you know, things are subsiding in a general sense, feeling better, obviously making those choices are going to make a big impact in a positive way. Um, but when would you suggest is the about time to go and get an appropriate test? And what test is that? Is that a hormone blood panel done or is that a different test you're, you're referring to? Mm -hmm. So the way that I work with my clients is clients get testing done right off the bat because they're coming to me with symptoms. They're not saying like, I feel so, so they're saying I feel terrible. I've gone to my doctor. I'm looking for testing or I know that I need something and no one's able to help me. So we, I actually run saliva and dried urine testing on all of my clients right off the bat. While we wait for the results, we start working on things like nutrition and lifestyle and stress management. And then once the results come in, I build out a customized hormone balancing protocol for them that goes, that, that's more targeted towards what they specifically need. So now that we're talking about testing, I know that sometimes the idea is that we're going to go to our doctor first and we're going to see what they say, what hormones are imbalanced. The thing is with your doctor, I mean, you can go do that. That's totally fine. I just, my whole issue is your doctor isn't going to do a very thorough investigation of hormone imbalances. And the reason for that is because your doctor doesn't really deal with hormone imbalances. Your doctor deals with screening you for disease. So they're going to see if you qualify for things like, um, so like I mentioned, like with the thyroid, for instance, do you qualify for a prescription for thyroid meds? If you don't, they're going to say there's nothing wrong with your thyroid, even though maybe your thyroid is underactive, like mine was. And um, for like a lot of uh, like more women who are like in perimenopause, reaching uh, menopause, doctors will test their blood to, for instance, see like, are they in menopause or are they like, what's going on with their luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone? And they'll say like, yeah, okay, like you're pretty much in menopause or, you know, that's where things are going. This is what's happening in your body. This is the reason why you feel the hot flashes and night sweats. And sometimes doctors will say, but you don't really qualify for hormone replacement therapy yet. So, um, so that's the other thing. However, the one thing that your doctor definitely does not screen you for is a cortisol is dysregulated cortisol and cortisol imbalances, because you cannot, I mean, you can test cortisol in blood, but you only test it for the purpose of whether you have adrenal disease. Doctors will not test to see if your cortisol rhythm is off because that's not what they do. They're there to really manage disease. And having a hormone imbalance isn't a disease. And I think we need to start, become more aware of it. And so I use saliva and dried urine testing because it measures. So number one, saliva hormone testing is what you would use to test for cortisol and other hormones. And the reason why is because it measures bioavailable hormones, meaning hormones that are available to be used by your body. So this is another reason why a lot of Women will come and work with me because they've gone to their doctor. They get blood work done and the doctor says, oh, everything's fine with your estrogen, progesterone. Things look balanced, like imbalanced. I'm not going to give you hormone replacement therapy. You have these hot, like night sweats and hot flashes, but like, this is just part of aging. And then women think this is what I have to live with. And it's only going to be a couple of years, right? But when we run saliva hormone testing, we see that, mm, in fact, there is estrogen dominance because it measures, though, it's more sensitive to screening for hormone imbalances. Mm. Okay. And I <clears throat> and I feel like that's where those that are entering into menopause, that's where the whole cultures come of, well, I'm in menopause, I'm naturally going to gain 20, 30 pounds, right? And, and some do, and that's the unfortunate element of it is because they are just kind of conditioned and programmed like, yep, that's kind of how it works. Instead of having the tools and the knowledge to go, you know what, if you can regulate it, you can manage it through stress, you can manage it through nutrition, you can manage it through sleep. I mean, what? What a novel concept. Sleep. A couple extra hours of sleep might make a notable difference. Um, and, you know, with uh, night sweats, I mean, I know 
me being in perimenopause and, you know, my mid forties that, you know, when I'm about ready to hit my period, I always have like a night or two of night sweats. <clears throat> and so then I know, oh yeah, I'm going to be on my period. And, you know, sure enough, there it is. Some months are worse than others. And I get, I know, and I'm in tune enough to reflect on what's gone on in my body, whether I've had an elevated amount of stress <clears throat> with, you know, kids or activities, workload, what have you, or have I kind of relaxed on my nutrition and what's my sleep like, you know, like even just an hour less of sleep for me makes a massive difference. Mm -hmm. And especially when it's interrupted sleep, which, you know, for women that have young children, I get it. Like interrupted sleep is inevitable. I've had plenty of years with kids running into my room and I'm up, you know, one or twice, once or twice a night happened not too long ago, actually. <clears throat> and so it's, you can't, you can't like outsleep that, like, that's just kind of part of, you know, motherhood. But even those without children, they still are still, you know, you have a bad dream or something just keeps your mind racing. But being able to identify what those things are ahead of the game, like being prepared. Like, I wish that I was prepared to understand what this was like. And it's hard to explain to anybody what perimenopause really feels like. Because there's no like, there's no like, book on it that's across the board with everybody's experience. You know, some people won't even know they're in perimenopause, and then boom, they get lose their period, and they're like, oh, oh, all right, cool, moving on. I guess I hit menopause. You know, like they're the lucky assholes. Um, but you know, then there's others that have these like you know ups and downs, and sometimes, and those of us that are in this industry, we're a little bit more in tune, but I love that it's a, you know, with your clients, the mandatory understanding of that screen, like that testing to say, what are we working with? Right. right. You know, you probably get the blood work back. They'll send you probably, you know, what their blood work was and you know, it all fits in the, Oh, if you're normal. Oh, yep. You're normal here. You're normal here. But they're like, but I'm not normal, <laughs> you know, so being an advocate is such, I mean, that's probably our biggest, our biggest asset that we have is to be our own advocate in understanding like, okay, so, something's misfiring. I shouldn't be gaining this kind of weight or I shouldn't feel this crummy because menopause doesn't have to be miserable. Right. I mean, it's probably not a walk in the park always, but it probably doesn't have to be as miserable as like its reputation is. Right. right. Yeah. And the other thing that I just wanted to also say is a lot of times we're just fixated on looking at hormones individually, but hormones actually counter one another. So you also have to look at the ratio with what's happening with specific hormones. So for instance, like we're talking about like night sweats and hot flashes that could be either um, low estrogen. It could be because progesterone is low. So now it's offsetting the ratio between progesterone and estrogen. It could be because testosterone is low. Now your testosterone is going to be low, not because you're going through perimenopause, but likely, be, likely because there's also something else happening in your body, like dysregulated cortisol. And so that's also another benefit of testing is because symptoms can overlap. And if we just go based off symptoms, we don't actually know what's happening with the hormone. And then it's a lot harder to, um, to get rid of those symptoms. It is because they just build on each other. Right. And then you, they get worse and then you are having to take on, you know, sometimes there's medical reinforcement and, you know, that's, I know that that's our MO is to either take somebody out of that and be able to manage it holistically and, you know, I think we're both along the same lines too, is that everything needs to be addressed from the root cause. Like everything that happens and our body is doing is a communication, right? Like our body is cueing us into something. Like there's a reason why you have brain fog. There's a reason why your sleep's out of whack. There's a reason why you get dizzy when you stand up. Like those are all cues, right? And those, that's data that we get to collect and go, okay, these things are happening. That checklist that your professor rattled off and you're like, oh my God, yes, yes, yes right? Like we've lost that innate ability to trust that our body is telling us something and that there's a root cause to it versus, Hey, let's just go run and throw some blood pressure medication and, you know, maybe an antidepressant. And maybe if we get back on birth control, that will solve everything too. Right. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's tough because, and I feel like we have an uphill battle because, you know, there's, there's so many of us, I think this, this industry fortunately is um, becoming more expansive because not only research is 
um, becoming more available or just more people are interested in it. And so it is just naturally rising to the top as far as importance and relevance. Um, and just that, you know, there's more research to holistic solutions and people are naturally wanting to go that route. Um, just, you know, whether they were holistic to begin with, or they're just sick and tired of relying on the system. Right. And I think women are just getting smarter. They're like, you know what, this does not feel good for my body. And I actually want to try something else. And they try the holistic way. And they're like, wow, this is crazy. How like within one week's time of, you know, making some meal prep and just prioritizing myself and my body, it's like, I already feel better. Right. So, right. So people are turning away from always wanting just to rely on a pill. And I also think a lot of the times there just isn't a pill that exists for them. Right. Take. Or there's a pill for this. And then you got to take this one for that. And then this one, over, you know, and we see that all too often. And, and again, I'm not saying that there's not a time and a place for those. Right. Um, I'm definitely an advocate of understanding that there is an appropriate time, but unless the root cause is addressed and prioritized, you know, getting to that, the bottom of that is going to just fare exponentially in the long term, especially as you transition into perimenopause and into menopause, having those tools. So I love, I love everything that, you know, we just went through because um, I think cortisol is probably the one hormone that is probably the biggest um uh, probably the biggest manipulator in our systems that we don't necessarily think we automatically assume it's the estrogen, progesterone, testosterone combo that is out of whack before recognizing that the cortisol hormone is one that's probably more dysregulated out of all of them and can be naturally re-regulated with those adjustments. So, um, if you were, so in just in closing, if, um, yeah, someone's listening going, okay, yes, yes, yes. What would be like your self-assessment? Like if you were to give somebody something to do um, right off there, like, they listen, like what would be kind of your immediate, like, okay, these are the questions you need to ask yourself and what would those questions be? Yeah, for sure. So number one, it's like, do you experience fatigue? Do you have lowered libido? Are there any sleep issues, whether you can't fall asleep or you wake up in the middle of the night or you don't wake up refreshed even after sleeping eight hours, let's say. Um, cravings, whether they're salty cravings, sugar cravings, this is your body telling you like that there is either like a blood sugar imbalance or dysregulated cortisol. So we got to take a look at that. Um, weight gain or weight loss resistance. For sure, the body's telling us that there's something that's happening there. Um, also like any menstrual irregularities. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just talking about like in perimenopause, like we know that you know, periods disappear sometimes and then they come back. So, I, I mean, keep that in mind, but it's just more so things like cramping, having like intense cramps or uncomfortable menstrual cycles, feeling like mood shifts happen. You're, everyone is like scared of mom the week before her period, right? They're like, oh my God, she's like yelling at us. Um, <laughs> like that's not normal. Like, you know, we sometimes normalize these things, but it's not normal. Uh, feeling like really low so not even just depression but just feeling like low and inward and not feeling like yourself um feeling emotional weepy you look at a tv commercial and it makes you cry and you're like why am i crying over this like these are all signs and symptoms from the body that there are hormone imbalances that need to be addressed and not all of those right like you don't need to check the box of all of those that's like if you've got one or two of these and they're consistent. Like, I think the key is consistency because, you know, you might have a night sweat and then you never experience one again for like another year. That's probably a telltale sign that, you know, a perimenopause is knocking on your door. Um, but I think having just even one or two of those consistently is a sure tell as a sure sign that, okay, there's something misfiring. Let's get to the solution. Yeah, for sure. So I usually say like, if, if these are symptoms that you've been dealing with for, you know, three months. Mm. And yeah. onwards, then for sure, because obviously like if you are, you know, it's like you've had like a very stressful month and you're like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm very moody and I'm tired and I can't sleep, but you know, it's because, okay, there's all this stuff that's happening. And then in the second month, you're like, oh, everything's back to normal. Your hormones were probably affected. 
but you don't necessarily have a hormone imbalance, but it's just the longer we deal with symptoms, the more likely it is that there is dysregulation that's happened with hormones and that it's probably going further downstream towards other affecting other hormones. And then it's a compound effect, right? Like yeah. once and then you add another and another, and then it's just like, you might as well get it addressed right out of the gates. But that's not to say too, that if somebody that has maybe all 14 things that you might've suggested, like all hope is not lost, right? No, it's no. not. Yeah. But the sooner you get to addressing it, the better you'll feel, the faster you'll feel. Because, you know, like, I just want to also just say this, sometimes women put things off. They'll say like, oh, it's because I'm a mom or because I'm stressed. I have all this stuff and they think that it's normal. But really, the longer you put it off, the longer it takes for you to heal from it. So address it as soon as you can. Right. And, you know, which goes right in line with weight loss, you know, those that have gained weight and it's taken 20 years to gain this weight and they expect to have the weight to come off, you know, in 20 hours is so unrealistic and, you know, which we joke about it, but at the same time, it's, it's true. And the same goes for, you know, basically unpacking all of, you know, the nuances going on internally in your body that could be resulting in that, you know, you take out the obvious of, well, are you eating fast food multiple times a week? and not eating enough. And so being hyper aware of your nutrition through this process is just as important as taking, you know, taking those steps further. Like at least you can control, start controlling, right? So I would say, you know, those that are like, okay, I check all those boxes, start writing down what you're eating, become hyper aware of everything that you're putting in your mouth. So that becomes data write down how much you're sleeping for those that have those aura rings um or any sort of thing that you know manages their sleep you're going to get a lot of data from that like collect that data and you know knowing what your days are like writing down those moments that you're like oh my god i just like flew off the handlebars like what triggered that mm -hmm. you know so just taking all of these this your lifestyle as a data point and start putting it all on paper all of a sudden like those like aha moments start popping up because now you see it visually. And that's when I think people go, oh my gosh, there's so much that I can do to, to change my lifestyle around. But while I'm doing that, I need to go and get some testing done to get to a deeper root cause to it. So I love it. Um, I loved what you shared. Can you share, Monica, you know, how people can reach out and connect with you um, or Instagram best or your website? Tell us what you got. Yeah, for sure. So you can come find me on Instagram at Monica E. Eva, and it's Monica with a K, um, or and send me a DM. I love voice notes. I love DM messages. So don't be shy. Um, or you can check me out at www.monicaeva.com. Awesome. Well, I'll have all that in the show notes just so people aren't like driving going, well, I got to go find her on Instagram. <laughs> Um, you can always go find her through me too, if you guys forget, but I love this Monica with a K. So that'll be easy to track you down, but you have been such a wonderful guest and shared so much knowledge. I mean, I was taking notes myself because I always like, I'm a visual person. Um, so I hope you guys found this helpful and did that self-assessment that Monica just rattled off not too long ago. Pause, go back, re-listen. And you know what, if you found value in this or you found something in yourself going, oh my gosh, I need to take this a step further, a step further further, reach out to Monica. You'll have her contact information in the show notes um, or, you know, easily to contact her through Instagram or through me. But if you found this helpful, tell a friend, share it, screenshot it, tag us both on Instagram. We'd love to know what you guys got out of it. Um, if you loved her Canadian accent, because it's such a dead ringer when she said a boat. <laughs> <laughs> So it always makes me feel like I'm back in touch with my Canadian roots, um, hearing that twang in your voice. So Monica, thank you for your time and all that you shared. And again, I really do mean it. I think we need to have a part two and do a deeper dive into all the other hormone things that, um, you know, women face too. So we'll have to get that on the books. I'd love that. Thank you so much for having me. We'll be back for part two. Yeah. Okay. Deal. All right, you guys, you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks for being on here with us. And until then, peace out.